The Sony FX3 is an awesome camera. However, just buying one isn't going to make your next movie as good as the creator. In this video, we're going to talk about the secrets of how the creator made the FX3 look so good. Before we get started, this video is sponsored by Audio, but more of them in a bit. First up is location, and I think this plays a huge part in actually how good an image looks. Not just in this movie, but if you watch many travel videos on YouTube, even for the last, say, 10 years, think of Beautiful Destinations, for example, they've had images that look great, even though they've been shot on cameras that might only be limited to 8-bit. Location plays a huge part in immersing the viewer and really can transform the perceived image quality that we're watching. The creator uses plenty of real world locations which really do immerse you within the scene and the location. Ideally, if you can apply this sort of same logic to your filmmaking as well, it's going to make a huge difference to the perceived quality of your final film. Traveling around the world might not be an option, but at the very least, just try and find locations or establishing shots that really can impress the viewer rather than going for something boring. For low budget filmmakers, set design and wardrobe is often overlooked. However, it's probably one of the most important parts to making an image look good. You want a rich scene with lots of textures. And you also want complementary colors in the fabrics and in the environment. These are gonna create the look. It's not down to the color grade and it's not down to the color science of the camera. Having an interesting scene like this, even with quite simple lighting, as you can see, the lighting is nothing particularly special. It's just some natural light coming in from the side there. Maybe they've added something extra to make it pop a bit more, but nothing that crazy at all. It looks very natural indeed, but the scene still looks great. The reason it looks so good is because they've got really nice, interesting backdrops. There's lots of textures going on all over here. Not only that, they've also got really good color contrast. You've got these dark clothes in the scene, which really help contrast against the lighter actual textures of the backdrop. Not only that, they've done it so that it goes light, dark, light, dark, light, dark throughout the scene, really adding to that depth. Also, those dark clothes help with making the actors actually stand out in the frame as well. You can see this coat in the background there, perfectly placed so that the main actor's face there is not just blending into the same color as the background. Suddenly it makes him pop out from the frame, making a much more interesting image to look at. Wardrobe also makes a huge difference to the perceived image quality as well. It's also about those complementary colors that we are seeing. I've got the uh, color palette up along here from DaVinci Resolve, so you can really see how you got these kind of complementary teals and oranges. But this isn't a LUT that's creating this. This is actually the clothing and the lighting that's within the scene. Very much the clothing, actually, and the th choices that they've decided to make within the frame. So he's got uh, an orange uh, clothing there that is adding to that. His face is pretty much just being lit by these blue LEDs that are, once again, built into the clothing. This just creates some awesome color contrast. We're going from those background oranges over there to then that nice blue on his face, which really emphasizes his face, makes his face pop out, and then back to the orange again. So it really creates a nice kind of focal point right there on the center of the image. A final example of the importance of a good set design is with this scene right here. As you can see, you've got really nice leading lines with the LED lighting that they've got going on on the roof, really kind of emphasizing those points of the direction of travel and really kind of adding depth to the scene. Once again, color is playing an important part to this scene and it is all down to the set design choices. It Once again, it's not a color grade that makes this look so good. It's not down to the color science of the camera either. It is down to the fact that they've chosen certain colors for the uh, background items. So they are complementary to the skin tones of the actor who we are focusing in on here. Now, not everything is down to what you're capturing through the camera when it comes to the perceived image quality that you're finally going to get once you've finished your film. Sound actually plays a huge part of that equation too, and it's something you really shouldn't ignore. The creator was, of course, very lucky to have Hans Zimmerman work on this film, and he has obviously those incredible scores that he creates for all the movies he works on, and that really does make a huge difference to the overall feel of the film, and then of course the image that you're getting from it. 
you probably won't have the budget to get him on your next shoot. However, what you can do is sign up to audio.com, an awesome site that has all of the music and sound effects that you need to really up the production value of your next video. I've actually used Audio since they launched a few years ago. What I love about their royalty-free music is the absolute quality and how authentic the music actually feels. This isn't like the cheesy corporate royalty-free music that you've heard in the past. These are tracks produced by real artists. So welcome to the it has a real production value to it that you just don't see anywhere else. I've used plenty of their music and sound effects on my client videos, and they just absolutely love the quality that they're getting from audio. If you want to sign up for the Audio Pro account, then I've got a special deal for you. Just click on the link below and use my code Jonathan70, and it's going to say you 70% on your first year of subscription. That I think is an absolutely awesome bargain for music you can use absolutely everywhere in your video productions. Whether it's YouTube or corporate clients, it can all be used with an Audio Pro license. In most of the creator, they didn't actually use that much lighting. It was often a tube light that they were using so they could move around really quickly. But it's the choices that they made with that light is what makes the big difference. In this scene here, you can really see there's a nice contrast going on between the exterior light, very orange warm light coming in from the side, compared to the teal light of the inside of the vehicle. It really adds to that contrast that we are seeing within the frame. Combined with the fact that what the character is wearing as well, so it creates this nice dark spot here, once again it creates some really nice colour contrast going on, so it helps them pop out from the frame. We've got the orange on the side, followed by the dark uh, blacks, followed by some more orange again, before we go into that really nice blue on that side of his face. But so he's not lost within the frame, we then have this additional orange going on here, as well as the bit that's catching on the background of the vehicle. All of this may have just been simply two lights that were being used. Something on the inside to create that blue and something on the outside to create the orange, which probably was just the street lighting in the location that they were shooting. But combined together, suddenly you have a really interesting frame. This wouldn't have worked just by changing the white balance of your camera or just by trying to color grade it in post, no matter how good the codec you're working with. All of this was done within the frame by choosing the right lighting. The same applies for this scene as well. Once again, using the contrast and the lighting to really pop the character from the background. We've got that strong blue lighting hitting the character and everything in the foreground of the frame. And it's just separated by having that very warm background interior lighting in the far distance. The vast majority of the creator was shot on just one lens. The lens they chose was the Kawa 75mm anamorphic lens. A very vintage lens that's been used on plenty of big well-known films in the past and has a very unique look to it. It has a lot of fall off on the edges, there's actually a lot of vignetting going on. It has quite a soft image as well and it's those kind of flaws that really add to the overall quality that you're getting in the final perceived image. It helps with the separation of the background. You can see within this frame here how the lens actually flares and really kind of adds texture to the scene. The flare is also lowering the overall contrast of the entire scene as well. This could be seen as a flaw, it's something you perhaps wouldn't want in your actual image, but this is partly what makes it so immersive in this particular film. Lens choice is an important part of making a film look the way that you want it. Combined with the location you choose and the set design you're going with, this all combines to the actual overall feel that you're going to get within the frame, much more so than the camera that you're choosing to use. So does this mean you should just scrap using any sort of modern lens, whether it's the G Masters or the Sigma lenses, very sharp, very clean, perfect lenses? No, that's not the case at all. They still play a very important part for certain types of shoots. Depending on what you're filming, you should pick the lenses that ideally work best for those scenes. For a lot of the work that I think we all do out there, actually this kind of lens wouldn't be appropriate. Yes, it works really well in this setting, but it would not look good if you're trying to do something where you want a much cleaner image, where the client is expecting to, to see a lot more within the frame. When choosing your lenses, when choosing the filters that you use for a shoot, just be aware of all those factors before you decide on what you're picking to use. 
finally actually talking about the camera itself and that is the settings and making sure that you really understand how changing the settings are going to affect the image that you're trying to capture. It's more about understanding the limitations of your camera. So you're making sure that the settings and how you've set up the camera is really maximizing its potential so that whatever you put in front of it is gonna look really great. I think we've proven in this video that color grading, although is important and certainly does play a part, it's not the be all and end all. It's not the thing that is going to make your footage look good compared to anyone else's. It is something that is meant to enhance the scene that's already there. If we go back to a scene that we were looking at earlier on in the video, the reason why this looks good isn't because of the color grade that they've applied. That has certainly emphasized the colors and sort of added and slightly taken away to really get the bits that they want to make you really focus in on. But actually a lot of the hard work has been done by the lighting and the set design and the costume design that they've done within the frame. The only thing they've probably done when it comes to color grading is they've probably darkened off the background over here and probably emphasized maybe with a power window on his face. Little things like that. That's the difference that they've done to really make the scene pop. It's not like a complete color grade that's been applied to the overall image with strong oranges and strong blues adding to the image. They were already there within the frame itself. Along with the color grading, the film grain has probably had an effect on creating the look of the creator as well. It helps just take away some of the digital edge, along with the lens, just helps create this image that looks less uh, digital and much more organic. Once again, by doing this on its own isn't going to transform your image. If you just add some grain to a poorly lit shot on your FX3, it isn't going to suddenly make it look good. It's all about these subtle additions throughout the entire process which come together to create such a great looking shot. Finally, there's the actual editing that makes a difference to the perceived image quality of a scene. There's one thing looking at a shot on its own out of context, but it's the combination of those shots and scenes that really make an image pop. If you have two shots that are very similar and a bit boring one after the other, this is often the case I see with drone shots, then it's not that exciting. You're not going to engage the viewer and suddenly the image, perceived image quality isn't as good. However, if you have a really good, interesting combination of frames going from one scene to the next, actually keep advancing the story, what you're trying to tell, even if it is something that's quite boring, suddenly the perceived quality of all the images look far greater. When it comes to editing, a bit like with lighting, what you don't see is just as important to what you do actually see in the frame. So choosing to take out shots or choosing not to use certain scenes in certain orders will make a big difference to the final feel of the film that you have created. I hope you've enjoyed this video and this analysis of how they made the creator look so good and how maybe you could apply that to your own films as well. Before you go anywhere, make sure you click on the link below and use my code JONATHAN70 to get 70% off an Audio Pro license. If you want to learn more about the rig that they used on the film, then make sure you check out my video where I actually recreate it using parts that you probably have at home.